Hi friends, I'm Veera Ravi. I'm back with the continuation of the file system. The previous video, we have seen what is a file system and how it will work, right? How it will store the data, right? So let's have a little recap about the how the data is stored in local file system, right? So in the file system, as you know that the file system is the file system is the, the way the file system stores the data and so manage the the data using file system your operating system uses the file system so you can say that your file system is contains some table and which has the actual references of your physical storage right so let's try to understand how the data will write into hard disk how the data will store into the hard disk because why we are discussing about this because we need to understand the basic understanding of how how the data will store in the normal file systems then how the distributed file system is different then how how do distributed file system is different we need to understand on the level by level so so your hard disk will be in the plotter right it's like a plotter so where you'll have a read and write head and it'll start moving and all those things will be right, right? we're not getting into more hardware details here so here the data is stored on the uh, uh, data will store on the hard disk data will store on the hard disk on surface of particular on particular see you can you can say that so your, your the red color what you are seeing here is a plotter it's a it's a plotter so the data is stored on the surface of the plotter in sectors and tracks the data will store on a surface of your plotter in sectors and tracks so what is the track here this black color lines are the track track this bla black color circles are the tracks and if you see uh, it looks like uh, you know uh, these straight lines these are the these are the sectors these are the sectors so uh, when the data is storing into hard disk the data will store in the form of small small blocks each block is each block is occupies the space from one sector to another sector one sector to another sector so the 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 sectors whatever we are calling a sectors it contains it contains contains some fixed number of uh, bytes sometimes it will be 256 bytes sometimes it will be uh, 512, 512 bytes right so it will contain some, some fix, fixed size of space in the bytes, right? So your block will occupy that space, right? So your sectors can be grouped together and you can say it's a cluster. Your sectors can be grouped together. You can say it's a cluster. This is how the data will store in a normal file system. Now, we understood the file system. So when we divide into uh, when you divide into three parts, one is the file system, other one is the distributed file system, then Hadoop file system. We are going to see now. So, what is a distributed file system? What is a distributed file system? What is a distributed file system? distributed file system so the name itself is saying that distributed the data is distributed into multiple machines let's say i have some data i have some data which is belong to which is belong to some let's say college college data in this college data you have a separate employees data it has a separate student data is there and you have some projects information there are new projects coming into their you know other schools or something and they have some software related data now this this data i want to distribute into multiple machines here what the normal distributed file system or you can call is a network file system in the network file system in the network file system the data will be divided into multiple machines let's look at here so there will be a dedicated mission for there will be a dedicated mission for employee there will be a dedicated mission for employee and employee data there will be another dedicated mission for your student 
there will be dedicated data or uh, machine for project information and there will be some dedicated data uh, uh, machine for it was software related information now this data let's say a college management there is some application or college management application or some application they want to process this data their data is stored in multiple different machines so what this client will call is a client mission right what this client want to see or manager want to see employee data what he has to do he has to go and log into this machine separately and he has to log into that machine remotely and try to perform some operation perform some operation or try to access it right so when you want to access the student data the st he will log into student machine by using his ip address by if it is linux environment he will go with ssh or if it's a windows environment he can do it remotely or whatever it is right and he can log into projects as well as so what he is trying to do he is trying to access the data from these machines individually and each mission he started logging into each mission so so each time he has to log into multiple times instead of that instead of that let's say the, your client wants to see all the data in a single place all the data in a single place so what he will do uh, anyway all are connected to internet anyway the internet is there then he will make them connect to all are connected to network network you can say all are connected to network so let them connect to all or connected to network and these guys are started okay these guys are started these guys are started sharing the data to sharing the data to this network layer so as soon as they connected to multiple uh, as soon as they connected to network and they started sharing the data to network file system they will create some network file system that's called dfs or nfs nfs they start share the data to this they start share the data to this when they start share the data to this what will happen this employee data will be available here as well i mean the drives are started sharing okay so the student data will be available here projects data will be available here software data will be available here when you log into this network file system when your client is logged into network file system he can able to see employee data student data projects data software data right what does it mean the actual data is stored in these machines only the actual data is stored in these machines only but as soon as they started sharing the data to network drive or network share, uh, storage layer your client is logged into that specific network layer by using his authentication is able to see all the data is available in the single hard disk it, he feels like uh, all the data in a single hard disk but actually the data is not in a single hard disk it's in different different machines and different hard disk but for the client he sees that oh it looks like a single hard disk the who who has created that uh, uh, opinion or who has created uh, i mean why it, why the client is feeling like that because he has when he log into this layer he found that the data looks like in a single place right he's assuming he it's not assumption as soon as he logged in he saw that all the all the data is available in single place he immediately he thought okay all the data in single hard disk he no need to log into multiple logins you know need to log in multiple times into different different machines if we connect to one one uh, network drive you can start access the network drive you can able to see all the data this is called network file system this is how the network file system works it is called you can say it's distributed file system as well so best example for this in sh shared drives shared folders shared folders in our office shared drives in our office so what will do there will be so many colleagues are connected they will start share, sharing the data to a specific a specific place what will happen whoever log into the shared network shared drive they can start accessing the data they can see all the data if they have access they can access it it doesn't mean that as soon as you see he can able to access everything no it doesn't mean that as soon as you see here he can able to access it no he should have authentication to access it so we will be seeing the shared drives right so you, uh, our colleagues will be start sharing the data let's say my colleague started sharing some books to me and that books every whoever log into that everyone can able to see that drive that disk the the folder 
right but whoever hacks a hacks whoever he has given the specific access to him they only can access that book right so he has given me access i can access that he will he can specify the access for a uh, read write read only some something he can specify right so whoever has authorized whoever has access they can only access it this is how it will work okay fine so we have a distributed file system already then why we need to go with the hadoop distributed file system here so the limitations we need to see here so when you look this the very first limitation is it follows the client server architecture so what is the limitation it follows the client server architecture we'll talk about that later i'll show you that what is the limitation uh, if it's a client server architecture it's not actually a limitation it is a way it follows okay i can say it is a way it follows now the whole data is loaded into single machine the whole data is residing into single machine if that machine fails if that machine fails we don't have a backup we don't have a backup so we need a dedicated mission to store the data so you are storing the data into dedicated mission so you do not process parallelly this data you cannot process parallelly so there are, there won't be any parallel process because the whole data is resides one mission the only one mission can do one process so threads are different and process is different guys the threads are different and process is different here right so while processing the data if the very first limitation is the whole data is residing into dedicated machine dedicated hardware i can say and for the dedicated storage if it is stored dedicated if it fails if it fails chances for lo losing the data losing uh, chances for loss of the data right and it's not allowed the parallel process because the data is not distributed into multiple different machines to process it no parallel process no automatic duplication no auto duplication what is no auto duplication suppose uh, i'm i'm storing employee data so it should not load into one machine it should go other copy into other machine that mechanism is not there so in this employee machine student machine is there as soon as i'm loading employee data one copy should go here and one copy should go here that that mechanism is not there there is no automatic duplication here and the data resides in this machine the data resides in this machine so whoever want to process they have to come here and process what are the logic you have written to process the data they have to come and process here still we have a data localization we don't have a data localization we have a code localization but uh, there is no data localization i mean what i'm trying to say here suppose your process is running your data has to go to the process what i'm trying to say here so wherever the data is there wherever the data is there the data has to go to the data has to go to process so that uh, that approach the data has to travel towards your process because the process will happen somewhere here the data has to travel towards your process engine no data locality data locality means wherever the data is there wherever the data is there the that place you are processing the data that place you are processing the data that's the data locality guys in this we don't have a data locality in this traditional approach we don't have a data locality right don't get confused the data locality means wherever the data is there you are processing there but in this architecture the data is there but the process engine is there here so the data has to move to here to process right so these are the limitations are there with the distributed file system then another limitation is still this data uh, distributed file system is still using local file system only i mean local file system means the data is storing in the small small blocks only still the data is loading in the small small blocks only right so what is the problem if the small block is there we will see that in a next video while we are discussing about hadoop distributed file system thank you guys